morning, brethren. Good morning. Good morning. Today is a new day with new mercies. We have been made new creatures to walk in newness of life, and our journey is taking us to the new Jerusalem. Amen. So any guesses as to what I might be speaking about this morning? <laughs> newness, th things that are new. I wanted to begin with a contrast, however, the contrast of the old and the new. We, knew these, we know these two things differ. Jesus, in uh, speaking about the old garment and the new patch, he said that the new agreeeth not with the old. And this is a precedent for everything new and everything old. The two don't agree together. They don't blend or mix. In this natural order of the earth, where we find ourselves right now, the old has dominance. For example, anything that is new immediately begins on the path to becoming old. So when we remember that we as believers, those who are in Christ, are being renewed day by day, this contradicts the natural order. It, uh, the natural process of things doesn't, um, doesn't work with this, but it also confirms a supernatural work within and a glorious end to come. So we can take joy in seeing these things becoming old because it's a confirmation that we are being made new. Now we have the constant reminder of the old with us both in our body and the natural order in nature around us. In nature, the cycle of seasons testify to the new becoming old. You begin with the season of spring and everything begins to grow and new life sprouts and everything is um, going toward the fullness of summer. But then we remember that the summer brings the fall, which leads to the death of winter. So even in the spring, what is new begins on the path to the end of which is becoming old. In this process, the newness of spring immediately heads toward the end of the old. The same process ensues when a new child is born. Just because this process may seem to take long, a long time, we can't forget the end of that process, the end of which it is going to come to. At the young age, the child might not seem to be evidently growing old, but we know that's the process of time. By process of time, it will be made evident. Now we remember with the body that the growing old is only, for those in Christ, only the outward part of us. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Amen. So it's comforting as we see the nature, but also our own selves, the old perishing. It's actually a comfort to us because it's confirming the work within of renewing and regeneration. Again, in the nature, things around us, the truth of the new or being renewed is shadowed. The winter, you remember we left with the death of winter. The winter gives way to spring. That's where the new life begins again. And when the new life begins, it grows and increases and becomes stronger. That, that's the fullness of summer then, when everything is in full bloom and growing wonderfully. That, at that point is where this parallel seems to break down because at the peak of strength is when you begin to see decline again and degeneration and things becoming old. So this is the same testimony that we have in the spirit of things that are new, gaining strength and increasing and growing. And then again, the nature passing on to what is old, eventually leading to death. So while we remain in this body and in this world, there will be a need for renewal, renewing of the mind and of the inward man. The old around us affects the part of us that's perishing and so it has this downward drawing to our, to our souls and the body, of course. And so we have this need for the inward man to be renewed day by day. That's the part of us, this inner man is the part of us that is more separated from the old. So it can be renewed. A rebuilding or repairing of what might be disrupted or eroded is what takes place in this renewing. I was thinking about um, the passing order. We've, we've mentioned the things that are passing away. I considered that as like a river that flows. And you know what water does to the earth? It erodes and takes things away, breaks down. And so that's kind of what this passing order of the earth is like for the believer. It has on those parts of us that are old and perishing, it has this eroding effect and, 
and declining effects. So we have need of this renewing, daily renewing. So, brethren, we do remember we have been made new. We have been. In 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. The old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. This is the seed of God that he places within us, that new man. Here we find the distinction within ourselves between the old and the new. It's when he created that new man that he made the first old. That's the distinction. Now in giving new life, we choose that new man. Christ gave the new life. We choose to be renewed in this new man. If we think of renewal as only repairing and rebuilding, then we might equate the new man and renewing and think that there may be some sort of a decline in the new man. But this isn't the case. The new man is created in righteousness and in true holiness. So to renew, you have to broaden our view here of the word renew. To renew also means to grant or obtain an extension. So to go farther now. The new man increases. That's the renewing of the new man. He grows and matures. The inward man, the inward man that we spoke about before being renewed, refers to our unseen part. It includes the soul. This part of us must be renewed by repairing and rebuilding. But the new man is renewed by enlarging and being enriched. So there will be no renewing for someone who is in the flesh. There first is a necessity to take action, to put off the old and to put on the new. This is where the renewing will take place. Of course, we do this by the grace of God. And the same grace that will enable us to put on that new man will increase the new man and enlarge the inward man to renew the rest of us. So this morning, we choose to put off that old man and to put on the new man and then seek the good, the increase that the Lord will minister here in our midst on this new day. You know, we, we renew daily this inward man. But I considered, we consider the Lord's day a high day because we will be able to make much more progress today than if we were separated from the brethren and, and by ourselves. So today we have a great advantage and we'll take, take great care to be wise with these things. Amen. We'll open with a word of prayer this morning. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful that you have brought us together this morning, and we're grateful that you have promised that Jesus is with us. We pray, Lord, that you would enable us to put off the old man, the distractions, things of this earth that are passing away, things that are temporal, and be able to focus fully on the things that are being ministered here in our midst. We ask that you would give us grace to take hold of the truth, to be profited by it, but also to profit one another, Father. We thank you for our meeting. In Jesus' name, amen.